everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. My channel's gotten a little bit dusty, just like this model here, because I have not uploaded a video for the past couple of weeks, and I do apologize for that. I had a few issues with YouTube, and real life also got in the way. But I am back, and that's what matters. And in today's video, I want to do something that I wanted to show you guys for a long time, which is how to clean diecast model cars, specifically how to remove dust. As you know, every diecast collector struggles primarily with three big problems. Number one, budget, or the cost of the hobby, basically. Number two, space. And number three, dust. These are the three prime evils, our biggest enemies when collecting diecast model cars. Regarding cost, I mean, the entire goal of my channel is to basically show you cars that look great and at the same time do not cost an arm and a leg. There are other, many other, in fact, diecast collectors out here on YouTube who show you some very expensive cars every week, basically, so... If you subscribe to them and you look at all their beautiful cars, there is one thing that you will realize, which is that if you start to buy them all, you're going to go broke very soon. On my channel, I try to show you models that really are a combination of being pretty, but at the same time not costing a ton of money. So if you watch my videos and you go and buy all the cars that I show you, it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Regarding point two, which is space, I have uploaded a video on my main channel page, which you can go and watch. It's about 30 minutes long, or possibly even longer, where I show you exactly what the pros and cons are of every single scale that is out there, from 118, which is this car, over 124, which is smaller, to an even smaller 130-something scale, and then to an even smaller 143 scale. And then there are other even smaller scales than that, like the 164 Hot Wheels cars and Matchbox cars that we all used to play with as a kid. An even smaller 187 scale, but I don't think many people collect that except people who collect model trains. But returning to the topic, and this is the third evil that we like to battle today, which is dust. I mean, when you're collecting model cars, dust is really a huge issue, especially if you do not have any display cases. So the first tip that I can give you as you're watching this video is do not throw away the boxes that your cars come in. I made this mistake when I started collecting, which was back in fall 2015, and I started collecting 124 scale cars. Uh, the first six or seven cars that I collected, I threw away all their boxes, primarily because they were 124 scale welly cars, and their boxes don't really look good. They were like green. It's not really... Interesting, like a Burago box, for example. Um, I regret that, because those boxes aren't coming back, and I have to find another way to keep those models away from dust. Most of my diecast collection is boxed, because, I mean, the boxes themselves do not occupy a whole lot more space than the model itself does. For example, if you look at the width of this car, it's about this much, but a box of this car is only about maybe this big. And same goes for the length, it'll be like about until here maybe. It's only the height that is much bigger than this. It's about, it's out of frame here, but um, the height is really the only issue when you actually collect the boxes of the cars. But otherwise, they don't really occupy a lot more space. So you're not going to save a lot of space by throwing away the boxes. It's just that you will be able to maybe see your cars, because when you keep them in boxes, a lot of the high-end cars, like the Kyoshos and um, the Hot Wheels Elites, they don't have transparent boxes. So if you keep your cars in the boxes, they will not be visible. But for all the low-end brands, and even for auto art performance cars, if you keep them in the boxes, they're still visible because of the transparent sheet that they have. So throwing away boxes is generally never a good idea. That's tip number one. Another very important thing that you have to keep in mind is what are the most sensitive parts of a car? And to me, the answer is simple. The most sensitive part of a car is its windshield. Front one, the back one, and of course the ones covering 
headlights and possibly even the taillights. These are so ridiculously easy to scratch. And once scratched, they kind of ruin the look of the entire model. So this is literally an extremely fragile aspect of our hobby. Very annoying, but we gotta live with that. And the second most sensitive part of a car is the chrome. Now the car that you're looking at here is a 118 scale Hot Wheels Ferrari Enzo. Of course, most of you know that, but um, it doesn't have a whole lot of chrome. But many cars have like huge chrome grills at the front, and it is very easy to scratch chrome, especially off like budget manufacturers like Maisto or Burago chrome. So these are the two parts of a car that you have to be really careful with. And regarding the, the actual body of the car, now most cars are die-cast metal. However, there are also resin cars and there are also actual plastic cars. And a company that makes a lot of plastic cars, especially in 118 scale, is Hot Wheels Foundation or Heritage. It's like the baseline Hot Wheels. And believe it or not, but this car is not entirely a die-cast car. It has a lot of plastic body panels. And the problem with the plastic body panels is that they scratch a whole lot easier than die-cast metal. Now let's get started. What is the best way to dust a car? Believe it or not, the best way is to actually just blow on it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but instead of, like, especially if you have a car that has been collecting so much dust as mine here, Instead of collecting all that dust on a piece of cloth, for example, the best way is really to get rid of, like, most of it by just blowing on it, and then what remains is what you should then clean with the cloth. So I do apologize um, if this is going to destroy the microphone, but I'm going to blow on the car, so hold on a second. Now let's talk about the tools that you will need to properly get rid of the rest of the remaining dust. So what's the material that you should use to clean dust off a model car? An actual towel? No. The material of this towel is way too coarse and will just damage the paint, the windshields, everything. What about a paper towel? I wouldn't trust these either, because even though the surface is a little better, it's still too coarse, and especially if you wet one of these paper towels, the chances are that parts of it will remain like on the car, and that leaves behind a huge mess that you just have to pick after, and then your nails may scratch the car, for example. The best tool to clean dust off a die-cast model car is the same tool that you use to clean your glasses, which is this, a microfiber cloth. If you don't have glasses, you can still get these for free at your local optician. Or basically any store that sells glasses. You just have to go to the counter and ask for a few of these, and usually they'll give you a lot of them for free. So, this is the tool that I use, and it has never disappointed me. Notice how the fiber is, like, or the texture of this is extremely smooth. This is about as smooth as I can get. So, I've never had problems with these. So that's tool number one. What is another essential tool that you need to remove dust from your diecast model car? You'll find out if you ask your mother, your sister, or your girlfriend. It's a makeup brush, an old one. They have a lot of these lying around, so if you just ask them nicely, they'll provide you with one. And the bristles of this brush are soft enough to be able to wipe the windshield without leaving any kind of scratches behind. So this is your next essential tool that you will need. Now what is another important tool that we will need to clean, especially hard to reach places on a die-cast car, whether it's a crevice, an air vent, or even the interior of the car? If you're thinking toothpick, you thought wrong. Believe me, I made a mistake of using a toothpick, covering it with uh, the microfiber cloth, and then going around and poking around and cleaning stuff. 
especially uh, the interior of the windshield and that was a terrible mistake that I made when I started collecting diecast model cars and I wrecked the windshield of my 124 scale Mercedes-Benz S-Class which I will show you in a different video so do not use these instead use this a q-tip the tool that you used to use to clean your ear with until you found out on the internet that this is not good for your ear but yeah you'll still have these in your house i'm pretty sure and if you cover one of this with your microfiber cloth you should still be able to get into places that are too small for for example your finger to reach and so with the q-tip you will be able to reach areas that are otherwise not accessible properly what is the final tool that we need now you might be wondering whether it is this which is basically a container of rubbing alcohol also known as isopropyl alcohol and for a long time i mean in the first two years when i started collecting diecast cars i used this like crazy i mean I basically went absolutely wild with this. And that's when I made a lot of very bad experiences. What I ended up doing to some of my cars by mistake was getting rid, or at least partially, of this sunstripe here. So I used to put a little bit of alcohol on the microfiber cloth and then wipe the windshield, and then I'd suddenly notice that there'd be a little bit of black paint on the cloth and then to my horror I would notice that a little bit of it was missing here and similarly I also made another uh, bad experience with the rubbing alcohol when it comes to plastic in the sense that um, some Hot Wheels cars are made out of plastic and so when you just rub even the car body with it you'll see red on the cloth and that's when you know you messed up so I'm going to show you that later, but first let's really get rid of the dust. So instead of rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, something far better is simply some water. Okay, Water is not always necessary, but if you want to get your windshields particularly clean without attacking the actual material itself, then use water. Also, if you want to get rid of stuff like dry water droplets or oil or stuff like that. So when you start cleaning your diecast model car with the microfiber cloth, really the first things that you should do is to work on the windshield. As I said earlier, they're the most sensitive parts of the car. So you just want to carefully place the microfiber cloth on the windshield and then just very lightly remove the dust. Then rinse and repeat a little bit over here. You don't have to be very thorough because we're going to be taking care of the dust that remains with the makeup brush. Just don't apply too much pressure and you'll see that this should be enough for now. You also want to repeat this process on the windows at the side. And you want to do this across the rear windshield as well very carefully, minimal pressure. Once you're done with the windshields, you can start working on the main body of the car. The reason why I said you should prioritize the windshields is simply because you start out with a clean microfiber cloth and before you get all the coarse dust off the body onto it, if you've already done the windshields, then that's just the best way to do it in my opinion. Again, don't worry about the nooks and crannies, we're gonna get them later with the makeup brush. I gotta tell you, sometimes I really do enjoy cleaning. It's just nice to see all your dusty models get amazing looking once again.
Now remember what I said earlier regarding the windshield, how you will not be able to clean all of it using just the microfiber cloth. This is where the makeup brush comes in. So all you want to do is just very carefully start removing dust from here. Just gonna speed this up a little bit because it's gonna get a bit boring but like I said the idea is to get into all those nooks and crannies that you missed earlier with the brush and just remove that dust Once you do this to a satisfactory level, your diecast car model should look almost as good as new. But remember, at the end of the day, prevention is better than cure. And what I mean by that is, don't throw away your boxes. It's going to save you a ton of work, especially if you start collecting a lot of cars, because I don't think you want to clean every single one of your dozens of cars every year, right? Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Imperial Diecast, signing out.